pretty good. Hey, boys and girls. Hey, welcome Facebook. Hey, we, we're live, you guys, if y'all don't mind settling down just a little bit. I know. Some of them been drinking a lot, so they kind of act crazy. <laughs> Jeez, slow down. I love it. Hey, did y'all see them in their Celtic stuff this weekend? Did y'all see that? Man, that's pretty. I wish y'all wear it Sunday. We'd like to have you and do a dance on the stage for it. Do a Celtic dance. That'd be pretty good, wouldn't it? Live. Hey. Hey, Beverly Nash. <laughs> he had some tights on, didn't he? Yeah. He, spandex. What? A, yeah. He's in Omri. She said he's in. I said it's Amory down here. Omri up north. Yes. Yeah, Amory, Mississippi. Hey, guys on Facebook. Welcome, welcome. Hey, real quick, like before we get too far. Uh, November the fourteenth, we'll be doing Veterans Day, and their uh, Chris Peppers want to do something special for all of our veterans. So he's asking that we get our pictures in. So if you know somebody or you yourself, we need to get those in pretty quick because probably what's going to happen is the day before she's going to get 300 pictures and she just won't have time to do it. So if y'all want to get pictures in, know somebody, Facebook folks, if y'all would get them in. Hey, Miss Nancy, help us do that. We want to honor our vets. Bet, bet, <laughs> pets. Honor them. I speak to say veterinarians. <laughs> honor our vets. <clears throat> it just comes out natural, y'all. It's just unfiltered. So, uh, hey, y'all y'all, please help us do that if you don't mind. Hey, two, I'll say this just a moment. Sunday, we were completely out of parking, and I need to ask some of you faithful to do this. If your class is in the back or in the gym, would you please park behind the gym? Because we were literally had no parking anywhere. Of course, we had a great crowd Sunday. But uh, if you wouldn't mind, I've already told the staff, meet me back there. They're all so excited and love me so much, and uh, so they got to walk. So <laughs> it's terrible, ain't it? So anyhow, y'all pray for me. They don't cut my tires. So 330. We jumped almost 100 in one week. Yeah, it's crazy. Bet that man. Hey, Miss Dillon. So it, it's great, great, great. But anytime you do that, you have. Uh, also, we need help in the nursery. We had one class at 17. So uh, great, but again, has needs. So. Hey, y'all pray about all that, and let's uh, help us meet some needs. Of course, Saturday's Harvest Festival, if you got kids. Uh, I'm going to tell you, if you're a grown-up, you ought to come. It's just fun. Uh, I'm just going to hang about there and cause problems. <laughs> I get one of them big super water soaker wet, and just they don't know I got it. And every time they turn their head, they go, who did that? And just, just, it's hilarious. So uh, I am going to be causing some mischief, so y'all be prepared, all right? Hey, all they can do is put me in jail, right? So uh, let's have some fun. Hey, let's, let's name some names real quick, like. Uh, Mary Ann Blazer will be having service. Is that tomorrow? I think that's tomorrow. Mary Ann, if y'all watching, we're praying for you, sis, and ask the Lord to be with y'all. Of course, Miss Ferguson, Grace Ann Hall, we mentioned her. Uh, visited with Glenda James today. Glenda's one of the older ladies in our church. She's having a lot of physical problems. Um, <clears throat> she had cancer. Um, then she had some liver problems, and now her heart's kind of running away with her. Her heart beats around 140, 150, and they're just trying to get her calmed down. So, uh, Y'all please pray for Glenda. They were doing all type of tests when I was there today. Patsy Walton fell and fractured her shoulder and her hand. So they uh, they can't do surgery yet, but they're waiting on the time to do that. You know, Patsy and Bobby, she is just, and they, by the way, they've just recently moved. I mean, just moved. So they're trying to set up a new house. And uh, so they're, they're just in a hard place. So please pray for them and ask the Lord to be with them and give them grace, okay? Um, ask God to be with them, all right? Hey, any other church family? Church family. I know Byron is traveling. He's down in Mississippi, the Holy Land, so pray for him as he navigates through that boat. When he comes back, you'll probably have to put sunglasses on. There'll be a glow on his face like he's been to the heaven. So you'll, have, yeah, you'll just have to kind of, you know, put, put that back. So anyhow, <laughs> he'll be hard to live with. He'll be so just... No. Yeah, I, <laughs> I tell you what, them why just y'all born that way. You're just born with ESPN. It's just terrible. Yes, sir. Hey, Mr. Spark. Uh, but pray for him as he travels. He's delivering a boat to Biloxi or, or down to the coast. So he's he's navigating through all the waterways. Um, hey, under our friends and families, we've kind of updated some of these names. Junior Clanton's mom, her name is Kathleen dementia she's in private care living hey if you've ever been hey girl girl if you've been hey brother if you've ever been through that that's a hard call that's a tough time in life when you're having to you know somebody you love but you, you you've got to do that 
So please pray for uh, Junior and, and the whole family as they do that. Marianne, we mentioned Marianne Blazer. Her brother, Carol, uh, will be having a heart valve surgery. I think this kind of runs in their family. If that's true, hey, Juanis Poe, hey, Barbara Austin. Hey, Miss Mary, if that's true, shoot me a, a, thing, a thumb up or whatever. Um, but, but pray for them. That's just a, uh, they go through a lot of that. Um, Steve Oliver's mom, her name is Agazelle, Agazelle, what, whatever. Um, pray for her, just a lot of Luke Oliver, that's the nephew. So they've asked us to please be in prayer for the Oliver family. I tried to call today and missed them, so I'll be praying for them, okay? Hey, uh, let's remember Michael Whitehead. This is Juanese Poe. It's COVID uh, family and is in the hospital with that. So please pray for them. Uh, Benji Woodward. This is Angie Brandon's nephew. He had a major accident, was thrown from a car, uh, went, been in all kinds of rehabs. And so, if, if, you know, we went through that with my son where we thought every day was going to die every day. Um, that, that gets real heavy. I'm just telling y'all every day when you go and say, look, look, doc. He's here for you to heal him, and he said, there's just nothing we can do. He's going to die. I mean, that's what he'd tell me. He's going to die. So uh, I think they may be past that just a little bit. Oh, hey, my lady. But uh, a long, long recovery, which means a lot of times you got to learn how to walk again. you got to learn how to talk. My son had to do all that, had to re relearn just basic life. And so, and then you throw children in there. It's just a hard, hard time. So uh, pray for Angie's family as they deal with all of this, okay? Hope I hadn't left anybody out. Any others we need to know about? If you'll get it online, we'll be happy to mention. Anybody else? Am I missing anybody? Everybody good? Wow. Y'all are y'all quiet tonight. You're kind of scary when you're quiet. You kind of like they got you got something playing and I don't know it and you're gonna hurt me or something like that. So just. Uh, I don't know if y'all mentioned, but there was a woman that they found in a field this morning. No. Rogers Field. She was on Well, I'll to say that, but sure. prayers for the whole situation. Wow, that's tough. I tell you, you don't have to live in New York City. To, yeah, it's here, so it's all around. It's just on a small scale, but it's here. Wow, hadn't heard that. Anybody else? Everybody good? All right, clip it over just real quick, like. Uh, let, let me share some of these again who, who uh, continues to need our thoughts. Don and Pat, Carl, Betty, Holly, Sarah. Stella, Maurice, Philip, Charles and Barbara, Sherry Ponder. Miss Sherry was saying hey to you. Miss Sherry's going through a lot. Pray for her husband, Richard, Louise, Landon, James, and Betty. All, all these are just specific needs. Hey, I'm going to say something about this. I'm going to be real tender. One day, you're probably going to be on this list. Don't you think about that for a moment. One day, you're going to get to where you can't go, and, and somebody somewhere is going to call your name out. And I hope you're watching the phone like, uh, I was talking to Miss Glenda James today. I said, hey, I was watching. So one, one day we all go end up on this list, right? Or an obituary. So let's please remember these people and ask the Lord to bless them. And, and you know, it gets lonely. And right now, just, uh, you know, people aren't getting out. It gets very lonely. You get disconnected. And it's, very, get, it's, it's easy to get very discouraged. And so please pray. Uh, I think I've told you all for years and years here, the number one time of the year for suicide is Christmas. And so people just feel so disconnected. So please pray for them. Ask the Lord to be with them. Hey, the nursing care assisted living, Arnita, Jean, and Bonnie. Mm -hmm. A lot going on in the mission world. Hey, thank y'all for praying for Pastor Eric Sunday. Wasn't that good? Man, to, to see the, the real, I mean, cooking, tor is that tortillas? Man, right there. <laughs> I've been there where the lady took the corn, put it through the corn sheller, shucker, whatever you call it. <laughs> kneaded it out, patted it out put it on the thing, and I mean, it went from a corn on the husk or whatever on the thing, cob, to a tatiga. Thank you, sis. My brain's not working. And uh, <laughs> it's amazing to see how they do it. It's nothing to, to them. That's what they do every day. It's like you put, making a bowl of cereal or a sandwich. They take a corn, shh, throw it down there, put a little salt. Man, and, and they are good, by the way. You have to get the dog hair off, but it's, it's good. So, and uh, you don't even know it fries at all. Yes. I have one. I, I don't want to mention his name. Yes. Yeah. My nephew. Yes. Uh, my sister's son, the one that passed away. Sure. He is not dealing with this well at all. Wow. Severely depressed. Sure. Thank you, Jesus. But I'm 
Sure, do that. All right. Hey, welcome, Miss Shelby Holcomb from Goods from Ocean Springs, Mississippi. Wow. Well, hello, hello, girl. Good to have you on there, Bobby. Um, I, uh, let me say something again. Uh, Sunday morning in a crowd like that, you never know the person next to you, what they're going through. They don't want to go home. They, don't, they, they. Uh, that's all I can say. A lot of that out there Sunday morning, and I promise you, you sit and you, you talk to people Sunday who, who just didn't want to go to Monday. So let's remember that. It's, it's a hard life. So let's ask God to bless them. Uh, but thank y'all for supporting Brother Eric and Amanda. Great story. Things are going well there. We're talking about some long-term ministry events taking place there. Um, I'll, sh I'll share that vision probably with leadership here in another five, six months where we are. But uh, I just ask him if there's any long-term things that, that's coming up that we can be involved in. Y'all know next year we're taking a big trip down there. Let me encourage you. I'm going to tell you again, if you want to take a mission trip out of the United States, that is the easiest trip you can take. I promise you. You'll see enough that you'll come back and thank God for the United States. But... Uh, you ought to do it. So uh, pray for them. P pray for the future of that ministry. What he, he, uh, He'd really like to, well, I'm saying stuff he needs to say, but there's just a lot more that he wants to do to birth a ministry there that, that will touch that whole area, Guatemala, Honduras, Mexico. The whole area is just uh, intermingled. So uh, and a lot, a lot, a lot of needs. He said uh, one of the sad things was a little 13-year-old girl has a baby, and probably it's her uncle's. Cause that's just mm -hmm. the way you live. You just uncle's by herself, so she. We, we don't understand that, do we? But it happens a lot, and that's just normal there. So pray for these missionaries as they as they face these situations and issues. That God will bless them, minister to them, and the Lord would use them there in a great way. All these people are vocational missionaries called by God. Pray for our military. Pray for their safety. Pray for their families here, there, and around the world. Whoever, wherever they are, hey, shot at night. Wherever they are. Uh, serving our country. We appreciate who they are and what they do. Uh, our medical personnel. Hey, um, have a moment right here. We have staff. If y'all call on Monday about 9, we, we meet with staff Monday on, every Monday morning. They just tell me what I did wrong on Sunday. <laughs> and they do. <laughs> Amen. Like Sunday, we did too much. It was a lot Sunday, right? Yeah, y'all would have been in that staff meeting. Who planned all that? Anyhow. Um, um, I was going somewhere. Oh, uh, <laughs> sorry. I had a senior moment. Uh, do y'all know anybody with COVID personally right now? Do y'all know anybody with COVID affected? By, and I wouldn't read the papers, but do you have anybody immediately in your family right now affected by COVID? We're trying to look down the list and make sure right now we don't know of anybody in our church that has it or is personally affected by it at this point. Now, I'm sure there's some because we, we didn't out there long, but uh, we, we thank God for that. Maybe the numbers are going down. People are starting to get back to a normal life but uh, please pray for these people so ask God to bless all our medical personnel law enforcement I need to say anymore man God bless them keep them safe um, watch over them our schools man uh, you're seeing all this stuff on critical race theory and man the fights that are taking place and it's, it's not going to not going to get any better so uh, continue to pray for them pray for Randy he's still recovering from bone marrow we sure will Miss Charlotte God bless you so pray for our schools, the school boards. I, I can't imagine because no matter, um, just let me share this. If I share something on Facebook, I promise you somebody's going to have a different opinion. And bam, you, you're busted and you just said something in us that didn't mean everybody has an opposing view, understand that, but it's hard. So uh, let, let's pray for folks on these school boards that they'll be wise. Um, I just want to say this. I hope nobody takes offense. Thank God we live in Alabama. Amen. You better thank God for that because it ain't sweet home Alabama everywhere, all right? So, uh, and it, we may have our own problems here. We do, but we, we still some great. All right? Hey, on Friday, Thursday and Friday, October 28th and 29th, I think that's tomorrow and Friday. Is that right? Am I, 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 uh, they're going to be having some help on, uh, make sure I get this right. I'm not sure if they're asking y'all for help or they just got help coming. Does anybody know? That's sad. I'm passionate. I don't have a clue. That's really sad. I think it used to community helpers. They would bring in like I'm, firefighters. Fire, and I'm sorry. Thank you. Like that. Yeah, that's. I, I just never heard it called like this. But they'll have police here. They'll bring in a fire truck. Kids are just, you know, we'll lock them up in the car and tell them I can't get out. <laughs> fun. That's really fun, by the way. <laughs> Their little eyes. Is, I'm picking y'all. Come on, man. Y'all got to lighten up. 
Um, do I need to say anything about fall festival? Hey, did y'all get the call and post today? Mm -hmm. We need about eight more trunks. People are willing. We got eight to 10. We need about eight more. We'd like to have about 15, 16. So if you haven't decided to do that, could I encourage you to decide to and uh, <laughs> call Chrissy? Uh, we're expecting five, 600 people here. So it's going to get cray cray real quick. So the more we have, the, the more that'll help. Okay. Be fun night. All right. So please do that. Hey, Sunday, I, I am preaching. But the Hogan family will be here every fifth Sunday. Remember, we're trying to do some older music stuff, so the Hogan family will be here. Pastor Keith got them. They're just a family who sings Southern gospel music. So the um, all the music Sunday will be the Hogan family, and then I'll preach. We'll, we'll be on this thing. of We dealt with what happens when Christians sin, but what about temptation? And, and these are pretty closely related. Uh, but I really want to help you on, on temp because so many people think if I'm tempted, then that's wrong. That, that is not wrong to be tempted. We're all tempted to some degree. But the Bible says a lot of times it's our fault, not the devil's. The Bible says you're enticed when you're drawn away by your own lust. You feed it. You don't take care of it. You don't, and, but I'm going to give you some advice, Sunday, to help you over 50 years. Some things I've learned, hopefully, to the, that will help. Uh, guys, I'll speak to you personally. Uh, Y'all remember last week I said this? I heard a preacher tell me one time, it's okay to look at a woman, just don't touch. Y'all remember that? That's a lie. That's not what the Bible says. Jesus said, if you look at a woman, to what? So you got to make a decision what you're going to look at. By the way, that just doesn't go for that. All right? That's in every part of life. It can be a car, truck, <laughs> house. I'm picking on my, my car guy. That can be any part of life. We, we use the sexual because that's the easy one. But I'm telling you, that, that covers so many areas of life. And so I'll, I'll give you some advice to help you. Some th I hope uh, that, that will, uh, biblically, from a biblical standpoint, to, to give you some uh, things to hold on to to help you when you're tempted. Because Jesus said in Matthew 6, and when the tempter came, I promise, you make a commitment to God, I'm going to do this for the Lord. He is coming to challenge your commitment to the Lord Jesus. I don't care if it's sexual purity. I don't care if it's drugs. I don't care if it's lying. I don't care if it's jealousy. Hey, put it in the blank. He's coming to challenge you on that commitment. Okay? So we'll talk about that. So the Hogan's will be here. Uh, again, Sunday the 14th, the veterans would like to have more pictures. So if you need to do that, we need to get those in kind of quick, quick, so the ladies don't have to uh, work too hard on doing that. I mentioned the parking spaces. If you would, please park around the back. Uh, by the way, we have security back there, just like we do up front. The door will be open. Now, it'll be kind of closed, too, but you can pull it open. But there'll be somebody back there helping you, okay? So if you could, Sunday, uh, join me and all the staff who are one excited about going back there. Join <laughs> us back there, all right? So <laughs> we'll have some good time. So please remember that. Hey, here's some 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 hard prayer requests. Um, Rick, Richie's mother, we mentioned this Sunday. His mother, Emma Bennett, passed away. And then Juanice Poe asked us to pay for Robbie Whitehead. These are people who've lost loved ones in these last weeks and days, and so let's please pray for them that God would give them grace, okay? Whew. Is that enough announcements? Good night. I feel like I'm on TV giving some kind of commercial, amen? But we need to do that. So, But but the parking really is getting to be an issue for the last three weeks, and uh, we really could use some help back in the back. So wherever the Lord impresses your heart to do that, you, you do that and uh, ask the Lord to bless it, okay? Anything else before we get started? Anybody else got anything you want to say? Glad to meet yes. Mr. Jean Hughes today. Oh, what a God. Yes, ma'am. So I uh, just happened to, you know, I was yes. going there for work, and I asked a staff member if they could introduce me to her, yes. and I just shared with her that, you know, that you mentioned her every Wednesday yes, night in Bible study, and I'm a new member, yes. and just was glad to meet her in person. Yes. So Y'all, she was, uh, she was 77 years old, and we had a Bible school with the, you know, how they dance and that stuff. I looked up on the stage, my hand before God. May Jean Hughes was in the middle of all those kids <laughs> dancing. And I went to her and said, May Jean, don't that hurt? <laughs> You're going to pull a muscle or break something. And, and she was having the biggest time of her life. And uh, she is truly one of the greatest um, examples of what a, not a man or what a person who loves God is, is May Jean Hughes. She is awesome. I cannot tell you how many hundreds of times she's come to me and uh, told Pastor I'm praying for you love you pray but I mean just I can say a lot thank God for the May Jean Hughes all over the world be one be an encourager and love people and help them okay alright in the morning times that's what I try to do 
Um, try to get in and have a little quiet time. Sometimes that's hard because people wait when you get at the door. But uh, then I get on the phone. Uh, thought about a couple people this morning who are going through a real hard time. Hey, you don't have to have a 20-minute conversation. Shoot them a line. Uh, send an email. Shoot a line. Sound like cocaine. Um, <laughs> not that I would know. <laughs> um, send them a line. Hey, you know what? Today just... Oh, you, today you're on my heart. I'm just thinking about you, praying for you. I know you're going through a hard time or whatever the situation is. Man, man, be that person to do that because one day you're going to need it. And I want somebody doing that in my life, and I do, and I'm thankful to God for them all the time. I can't tell you how many times. Sitting in a restaurant five years ago, church going through a hard time. I can't remember what it was about. And I was, in, and it's uncommon going to a restaurant. People see me. They just I've been here so long they know who I am. I was, sitting over, I was trying to just hide, to be honest with you, and I was in such a bad mood. And I'm, I'm really telling the truth. Guy walked over and said, you don't know me, just want you to know, Pastor, I'm praying for you today. Wow. Jeez. Got ready to leave. Guess what? Pay for the meal. Jeez. So anyhow, be, be that person, okay? Do it when you can. Do it when you can, all right? Hey, turn to anything else. Ephesians 4. Hey, Don, hey, Don Posey, Bob Rawson. Hey, tonight, um, I want to do something with you a little bit. Um, I've been sharing just some older messages that I've, I've done over the years until I've just still had, my heart still hadn't just melted on the subject yet for us to go through, we will. Um, I'm praying in January, maybe about doing something on the family when we get through Thanksgiving and Christmas. But in Ephesians, um, one of my favorite books of the Bible, just because it, it just speaks so um, clearly, if I can use that word, to Christians, he, he's really, he, he does call us out a few times, uh, but at the same time, he, he is edifying us, trying to, and that word edify means to build up, he's trying to build us up at the same time, hey Billy, he's trying to give us things that we can listen to and learn from that will help us in the Lord. Chapter 4 of Ephesians is where he's encouraging the church to be in unity, to have a, a common goal, to be together. Hey look. I don't know, how many we got here tonight? 20? Whatever. 15, 16, it don't matter. But but we can all be Republican, Democrat, or Alabama, Auburn. Uh, t- I don't know why you'd be a Tennessee fan, but inhale, whatever. So, <laughs> come on, y'all help me out a little bit. That's pretty good. Um, but we do have a commonness or a, a something that unifies us, and that's the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So the Bible here is speaking to us about this one thing, the one thing. Uh, from verse 3 to verse 7, he uses the word one eight times. So I'm going to read it to you. Uh, and, and listen to, to how he speaks about... Um, have you ever seen a, a mom and dad with a bunch of kids and they're in a store and they're just scattering like quail? You ever seen that? Just stop, quit, come here. Be, you know what? Yeah. Um, I, worked at, I told you I worked at Piggly Wiggly. I was the hog. I got to dress up like the hog. and We had a family come in, had uh, nine children. And one of them was seven years, and the mother was so tired, the little six-year-old would walk around with a bottle in her mouth, go in and hold it. She won't drink, she just hold her head up. She's six years old, but she didn't have time to wing it. She didn't. She's tired. Well, a guy pulled up one day in a big truck, and he had a bed on the side, and they didn't know it. They came in, and down in the bed of that truck was a big St. Bernard. And I'd gone out delivering, gro- you know, bagging groceries and take them to the car when we used to do that. Well, we all knew it was there, but the kids didn't know it was there. So these nine children went in the store. They're coming out, and as they come out, one of them hit the truck, and the dog goes, Hur! Nine kids went nine different directions. <laughs> my kids, my kids. They were up tailpipes. They were on top of cars. They were in trees. We hunted kids. It was funny, y'all. It was like bowling balls. Bam! They just scattered. And we were laughing, but the mom was crying. My kids, my children, my dog, oh, Lord. So um, how, do you, how do you keep it together? How do you keep it in unity? Um, so, so listen as Paul. Verse 3, now notice the action verbs. Endeavor, endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of... That's a pretty good verse. Uh, church this side, I don't care. You're going to have differences of opinion. Some people like it loud. Some people like it soft. Some people like it loud. Some people like it low. Some like it cold. Some like it hot. You, you just have all these difference of opinions. But here's what he said. Endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Hey, I was at a ball game the other night. It was pretty, it was pretty rowdy. And I can't remember where I was at somewhere. And there had been multiple personal penalties. When I say personal, I mean 
fights and, and blah, blah, blah. And just about five minutes of the game, they always do the lowering of the flag. The guy said, would you please stand up, take your hats off, put your hand over your heart. All of a sudden, calm fell on the place. Nobody's fighting, nobody's fussing. Everybody had a what? Calm and go. It was unity. Even though we wanted to kill each other. All of a sudden, all that meant nothing because of what was taking place. And here's what he's saying. The unity and the bond of peace with Christ is something that is so special. We ought to endeavor. We ought to work at it to keep it together. How do you know that? Look in verse 1. There's one body. How many bodies? One body. Listen, you know, we, we can fuss about this. Who's saved and who's not saved? I'm going to leave that up to God because I just don't know. I believe there's some saved Catholics, don't y'all? I believe there's probably some saved Mormons. And I'll get some rebuttal on that, but I, they don't know. They just go to church and hear Jesus saves. And they do, they do say that, by the way. You can get saved ignorantly. Did you know that? I don't know everything. Do y'all? But I'm trying to tell you this. Listen carefully. Some people just come to church and their heart's hurting and they hear the gospel, they hear the word Jesus, and they just know he's saved and he came to die. They don't know all the church hierarchy and what they mean. All they hear is that God loves them, Jesus died for them, and by the way, that's the gospel. I mean, we make we make all the... I'm, I'm working on a sermon. Quit building... Listen, man, I forgot it. That's a real real good sermon, isn't it? Good job. Uh, quit, quit blocking the road and start building bridges or something like that. Quit building walls and start building doors. Opportunities for the gospel. Bridges and doors rather than walls and fences. Now, I understand we all need to believe some things and all the church said. But let's understand this. There's one body. And by the way, it's not your body. His body. My grandson's come out of the room and I go, good night, you wearing that out in public? I said, because my wife will slap me in here. I said, son, you look like a... You know, and don't act like I'm talking over y'all's head. Y'all got real spiritual. Like, good night. I said, son, you, you know, but listen to me carefully. That's their life, not my life. So what do I do? Just, just be quiet. There's one body, one spirit, even as you're called in one hope of your calling. One Lord. How many faiths? One faith. How many baptisms? One God, Father of all, who's above all, through all. I like that, in you all. Above all, through all, in you all. But unto every one of us given grace according to the measure of the gift. Of Christ, so I'm, I'm talk a little bit, a little, little while about the ones that keep us together, the things that when, when, when we're battling and we're raging and we're upset, the one thing that makes us all stop. So hey, I'm on the team. I don't mind telling you, uh, hey Miss Lavina Burns, um, I want you to listen to me careful. Uh, right now, Southern Baptist Convention is going through a pretty tough time. Uh, I don't know if y'all seen the executive director Ronnie Floyd resigned last week and said he just. It's just time to quit because it's just so bad. Uh, executive members, as of right now, seven executive members, and I got a dear friend on there, have quit, walked out because it's just an ugly time. So what what says says to all of us that maybe we're in different places, but stop, and this is one place where we say, I'm for that. I'm on board. Let me give you three of my things. Number one, do y'all know that we have one mission? One mission. Now listen to me. Under that mission, there are many different things, but ultimately, we have one mission. What is that? To share the good news of the gospel. The only reason First Baptist Center Star exists is to share the good... I think I'm fixing to preach, so I'm going to stand up. <laughs> Y'all excuse me. Sitting down is hard to do. Uh, the good news of the gospel. So we have one mission. The thing that, that rallies us together like on Sunday with all the different people. We had a lot of new people, and thank God for all that. But the one thing that makes us stop and say, hey, I'm for that, is our mission. And that is to share the good news that Jesus Christ loves everybody, died for sinners, and that you can be saved if you come to him. So I want to say to you tonight, one thing that ought to keep us together is our mission. It's not my mission. It's not your mission. It's his mission. And when we're on board with that, God blesses when we have one heart, one goal, one intention. Now, now listen to what he says. Back up in verse 1. I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you ought worthy of the vocation wherewith you call. You ought to live in a certain way. And this is how you ought to walk. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Wow. 
Well, we need a little lowliness and meekness around us, don't we? We're a proud, strutting people. I don't care what you say, we are. I met a guy the other day, he could strut sitting down. Um, but we're just a proud, strutting people. We need lowliness and meekness. Why? Jesus didn't die just for a certain few people or a certain kind of person or a color of people. Jesus died for everybody. And that mission ought to make the whole church and stop and say, yes, sir, I'm on board for that. So when everything's going crazy in our world, when, when everything seems to be swirling like a whirlwind, let's remember this. We do have one mission. You can tell everybody you meet tomorrow, everybody. I don't care where they're from, what language they speak, if you can speak it. You can tell everybody Jesus loves you and died for you. You can tell everybody that. I'll say to you, you can do that. Not only is it to share the gospel, I think ultimately our mission is that we're to serve him. Remember Matthew 28, go ye therefore into all the world. That word go means God's given us a commission, not a suggestion. So we have a responsibility. Our church, and, and Pastor Eric said it Sunday, our church is heavenly baptized with missions. Since day one, we just felt led that that's something that we can do. Not to be self-centered about us and what we want and what we like, but we want to be world-centered to share the gospel of the Lord Jesus. Did you hear what he said when he went to a village that nobody had hardly been in before? Isn't it good to know that we're going to a group of people that probably have never had anybody minister to them in Jesus' name, and they're getting to hear about the good news of the gospel? So not only are we sharing, but, man, I'm telling you, we have a mission. That is that we're serving together. Good or bad, right or wrong, we're all on the same team. We're on the same, uh, we have the same purpose, if, if I can just put it very simple that way. So with the gospel, with our, with our service to him, sometimes that requires and demands that we make sacrifices. Let, let me read this again. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering. Now here it is, forbearing one another in love. You know what that word, anybody got a different translation? One verse you learned better. Number two. Gentleness. What's the end of the verse say? Showing tolerance. That's a good one. Where's your say, Marie? Well, it says long suffering and then bearing one another. But, so uh, here's what it literally means. Say what? Accepting one another. It literally means this putting up with each other in spite of our, our differences. That's literally the, the Greek idea there is this I love my brother so much that I'm willing to put up with his differences. I may not like them. I talked about that three weeks ago in the pulpit, but I love him so much. Hey, Mr. Richard Ponder, pray y'all doing well. So I'll say to you, our mission rallies us together that even when we don't see eye to eye on every little thing, ultimately our goal is we have one mission, and that is that we are to get to where the Lord wants us to be and to do what he's called us to do. And we can be on mission doing that. Remember this, who's your one? The cards are still out there. Get you one. Who's your one? Pick out somebody. Pray for them. Send them a card. Write them a letter. Call them. If, if you feel comfortable enough, we, we had the conversation class in here for a while. C converse with them about who Jesus is and how that that mission causes us. I don't care if you're in a rural church or a city church or a big church or a little church. That really is insignificant under the fact that we're all in the same mission of sharing the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And by the way, that means living lowly. By the way, lowly there, again, humility lives for the glory of God, okay? So I think the one thing that, that calls us together is a rally cry. Our mission is the same mission. We all have ultimately the same goal in mind, and that is to bring honor and glory to the Lamb of God. So let's read this one more time. Endeavoring to keep that unity of the Spirit. Um, the, the best analogy I have... Y'all remember years ago they had the egg challenge where you take an egg and pass it around, you know, you know had a line. Y'all remember that little game? And, you know, don't break the egg. It's careful. It, it, you know, if you drop it, then you lose. Man, I, I'm going to tell you, unity is a fragile thing. It's really hard. It's really difficult. Unity is fragile. And you have to endeavor, put up with people in, in likenesses and in differences uh, I was at the pastor's conference. We had a big pastor's conference. A guy come in from out of town with doing something. They got at a table with some other guys, and they're crazy. <laughs> they're, they're just crazy, and I wanted to say that. But rather, I just kept my mouth shut because they were looking at me like I was pretty strange too. Um, what do you mean by that? Sometimes you just got to realize my way may not be the best way. 
Can I say this? My way may not even be the right way. I might need to listen to other people to see what they have to say. And by the way, y'all know your pastor has a hard time listening. Do y'all have y'all figured that out yet? That, that I that I break into people's conversations. I'm I'm terrible. I know I do. My wife says, "Would you just shut up and listen?" And that is so hard to do because I know so much. <laughs> y'all right? I'm serious. So I had to fight that. So God give us unity in the body. The message of the cross is that we're one. Hey, Sunday when we got through, y'all remember the little song we sang? We're what? We're one in the bond of love. What a song. We are. Now, we may drive different color cars and different kind of cars. Was out there talking about what's the best kind of car? Why would you drive anything other than a Ford or whatever? What You know, we're all messed up. But when it comes to the gospel, when it comes to the gospel, Jesus said we ought to have one mission. Go ye therefore into all the world. Share the good news of the gospel. All right? So the first thing that, that ought to make us stop, stand attention, listen, is our mission. Number two is this, and this is very important, is the message. Not only do we have one mission, do you know we have one message? Now, you say, now wait a minute, Pastor. There's Methodists, Methodists, there's Methodists, and there's and they are. And by the way, some great Methodists, Assembly of Gods. I love my Assembly of God brethren. I'll be honest with you, I could be a Assembly of God in a heartbeat, man. I could do the dance. Y'all y'all see me when I do the <laughs> the God. Y'all don't be so serious. It's, it's all right. Um, man, you ever seen Assembly of God dance? Yes, man. Throw out, not get out. Um, listen to me carefully. While we may have shades of doctrines that differ, I've got dear brothers who speak in tongues, and they they feel like that that is a gift of God. Great for them. I, I salute them. I've been in their churches. I've been around it, a lot of my early ministry later on in life. Uh, one of the biggest revivals they said that we've had in the last 50 years was at Brownsville in Pensacola. I don't know if y'all heard about that. I was there. Uh, the pastor, Ron Hill, preaching. I was there and, and seeing. Um, but, but that was a gift that God never enabled me to get. I, I wanted it, but if he wanted me to have it, I was open. I said, God. So while we may have variances might be a good word. I want you to listen carefully. Ultimately, ultimately, if you go to those churches, you're going to hear one thing. Jesus died and rose again. Remember that. That's the central message. Not only is our mission to share that story, but we understand that that message is the same. All right? What is that? Well, it's the gospel story. Hey, I had a uh, dear friend of mine, and he and, and y'all understand I'm a conservative, and he's a fundamentalist. Y'all know the difference between a conservative and a fundamentalist? You know, fundamentalist women can't wear pants, can't cut your hair, can't wear makeup. Uh, who? And, uh, you know. <laughs> Thank God for making it. Amen. And, and I'm picking guys. I'm just having fun. But same thing with guys. Uh, and, and, you know, if a woman even snorts in church, that's sin. I mean, I'm serious. If a woman even, you know, and because and, a woman cannot speak around a man. I said, well, you know, the first two people who preached the gospel were women. He said, what? And I said, Peter heard about Jesus' resurrection from who? I, last time I checked, they were females. And the first two people to share the gospel were females. They had to tell the apostles, and the apostles still didn't believe. Are y'all all right? Got real quiet right there. What do you mean? While it, we have, may have different variances, don't you listen to me? I didn't say we ought to have lady preachers. I know who we are, but at the same time, I believe God gives us a gift of grace to do whatever he calls us to do. And I've heard some ladies do a pretty good job. Uh, sharing the gospel message. We do have a gospel story, the death, the burial, and resurrection. So in most of the churches I just mentioned, if you were to go in there, you would hear a central message. While it may be the Eucharist at our Episcopal brothers, the Lord's Supper like we did Sunday, they would call that the Eucharist. If we go to our Catholic friends, they'd call it substantiation. They believe that literally that Jesus' blood comes alive in the cup. You're drinking the blood of Jesus, literally. Sub transubstantiation. So, but if you hear the message, it's this Jesus died on the cross for our sins. He was ultimately raised from the dead by the glory of God three days later. That's the gospel. So, our mission, but our message is one of the gospel story the death, the burial, and resurrection. And by the way, apart from that, everything else we can pray about. Okay? Uh, I believe in the virgin birth. I believe it wasn't just a little Jewish damsel. I believe it was 
I believe it, I, by the way, I believe there's a biblical reason she was a virgin because she stopped the, 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 the blood flows from human to human comes the DNA and all that sinful stuff. Well, he, he doesn't have an earthly daddy. It's totally different. That's why he was, she was born of a virgin because his blood is pure. It's not tainted by man. Isn't that great? Mine is, your is. His, his was not. So there's a, there's a gospel reason he was virgin born. Okay? So I, I, um, I'm, I'm going to stop. Any questions right there? Y'all all right? Are we okay? Are we okay if somebody doesn't believe in the virgin birth? I can't say that's, that's a big monster. Uh, let, let me say this. Uh, I, I do have a problem with it. Uh, now, in the book of Isaiah, when it says uh, um, you can prove contextually he was not talking about Jesus at that time. He was talking about a king being born and that that king would come from a young virgin. Go, go check the context. I believe it had dual meaning. I believe he was speaking of the king that would come, but also it had a messianic, what's called, you all might want to write, a messianic overtone. Psalms are full of messianic overtones. I believe David was speaking about Jesus even though they didn't have a clue who Jesus was. It's a messianic overtone speaking about the Lord. So when Isaiah wrote that prophecy and the government should be upon his shoulders, he was speaking about the coming of the Lord Jesus. To me, it's a big deal. But I do understand people who say, hey, but in the context, the word there in the Hebrew, I spoke uh, with a Hebrew scholar the other day. He literally can get up and preach out of a Hebrew Bible. He said, I'm telling you, Ron, that word says Jewish young lady. It doesn't say virgin in the Hebrew Bible. But if you go to Matthew, he would say it does in the Greek. You know, Old Testament's Hebrew. So he would say, if you take the two and you match them together, you come up with the fact that she was a Jewish young lady who was a virgin. By the way, uh, in Jewish culture, if you said young lady, virginity was almost implied immediately. Because if you weren't, you could be stoned to death. So when he said a young Jewish damsel, it, it wasn't even a, they didn't even think about it. It wasn't even in their culture to think like that, all right? But but I do have some fundamentals of the faith that I'm pretty strong on, that I'm not going to, you know, virgin birth one of them. I think that's a strong issue. I think that's got to do with the atonement. That's just not saying, hey, he didn't have a daddy. It was a miracle. It had to do with the atonement. So when you say virgin birth, you're talking about the atonement. Anybody else? That's a good question. Good question. Some of our liberal friends would say it was not necessary. I think they're totally wrong. All right? So what is the gospel? The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Why did he die? So that you and I might be saved. Our sins could be washed away. No, it was about a story of grace. I mean, story of gospel. It was about salvation of grace. Hey, now read these verses with me real careful. He says here, now keep that, endeavor to keep that unity like an egg, man. man be careful with it. But look what he said. There's only one body, one spirit, even as you're calling, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. So he begins to describe the oneness of our faith and who we are, the Lord Jesus Christ. God has given us this unity. So to everyone, God has given this, this story of grace. Listen, if you've been saved, did you know you have a gospel story? You have a testimony of how Christ saved you. You don't have to be in the hood 32 years, killed 92 people, been down in Mexico and buried bodies. You don't have to do, I, I know that that sounds good and how God, and I rejoice and shout, but I'm just excited when a little seven-year-old boy comes down to the house and says, you know what, Pastor? My mom's been telling me about Jesus. I want to get saved. That's just as big as the other guy, all right? I know that, that it took a lot of grace to get this one in the kingdom. I know there's measures of grace. I understand all that, but both of them are saved now. Both of them go to heaven. Both of them are hallelujah, praise God story, Amen. And by the way, I'd rather miss all that other stuff, wouldn't you? Yeah. Why go through all that? I'm glad God does that. He does. But you do, if you're saved, you have a story about grace, how Jesus loved you in spite of you. All right? So we have one mission, but I'm going to tell you, at the end of the day, we've got one message. It's not my message. It's not a Baptist message. It's a gospel message about grace and how Jesus Christ died to forgive us and to cleanse us and to allow us to be adopted. That's a beautiful phrase, by the way, adopted into the family of God. Hey, my mom had six children, and um, um, my dad was just he was just just a different dad. He wasn't around a lot. He just thought as long as there's food on the table and lights, shut up. That's my dad. Just shut up. And that, 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 by the way, back there in that culture, that's pretty common. If you have a house to live in, you got food, shut up. Don't you worry about where I've been. Don't ask me what I've done for a man. That, that was... So anyhow... 
my mom decided to go back, thank God, when she was about 35 to get her degree in nursing. Six kids. Ladies, anybody up for that? Six kids. College. I got some of her papers. She was a straight-A student. But anyhow, um, sometimes, because she would still have to work, she would, and I'm going to say this word, she would pawn us off on our aunts. And it was not uncommon. The last day of school, I got picked up in a little suitcase, and I went to my aunt's house. Why? Because Mama was in school and working. And I, and I was used to doing that, going living with my aunts. So I, it, it, in, in a way, it's kind of like being adopted. And, and I didn't know what was going on. I didn't have no sense. You know, I was just a five-year-old kid and uh, didn't know my mom was going through H-E-L-L, -L, backwards and forwards. I didn't know all that till later. Other than this, sure good to have a place to go. Somebody still loved me. And somebody still showed grace and compassion. And uh, my aunt still talk about today how weird I was. And, uh, <laughs> and they're right. Uh, I was something. Um, a gospel story. I was a comedian at age four. I would stand up and they'd all sit there and I would just, uh, at age four, I would make up stories. Um, so grace uh, means you've been adopted. Literally, could I say this? You've been accepted into the family of God. Don't deserve it. I got accepted in the family of God. Wow. And in that, I don't know about you guys, that just, that just speaks to me. I got accepted. God loved me enough that he allowed me to be a part of his family. He adopted me, accepted me. And, that's, and that is on the terms of grace only because none of us deserve it, okay? I told y'all when God called me to preach, I thought he was talking to Ricky Ezell, pew behind me. Ricky's daddy was chairman of the deacons, chairman of the finance committee, chairman of everything. Ricky had been to church before he was ever born. I didn't know anything. I didn't know a postlude from a prelude. I didn't know the Old Testament from the New Testament. I thought the epistles were the apostles' wives. I didn't know nothing. And when, when I, that, I'll never forget that Sunday, I, I looked back and Ricky was sitting behind me. And, and I, you know, I, I realized he's back there. <laughs> Not my daddy out in the bar. And, uh, probably some other lady's house, and so, not me, and stranger things have happened in the kingdom of God, amen, and by the way, Ricky hadn't fared well, bless him, Lord, gospel, grace, so the message is based on what he has done for you, and what he has done for me, and thank God he did it, amen, so there's one mission, that's for the rally cry, there's one, hey, there's one other thing here, and I really want you to see this, uh, we got a few minutes left, look in verse um, 5, now he gets, um, I'm not going to do heavy Greek stuff here. One Lord, curios, that's the, the, the idea there. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. And then he says this, one God, theos. Hey, um, when we talk about theology, theos is the name that, that we, you know, monotheistic, polytheistic, all those things, theistic. The word theistic means God, many gods, one God. Mono, one, poly, many. So when somebody says, hey, people believe in, polytheistic, that means they believe in many gods. If they're monotheistic, the word theistic, theos in the Greek means God. Monotheistic means they believe in one God. So look what he says here. There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God. Listen to me. There's one master and only one master. Um, I'll say this as kind as, that's why I vehemently disagree with the position of the Pope. He speaks, and when he speaks, they equate that with God talking. I got a problem with that. The Bible said there's how many lords? How many fathers? Not a Pope. It's in Rome. Sorry. He, he is way out of line thinking that he can stand up and speak and that be the voice of God. Now, let, let me say this. Very few times have you heard me get up and say, hey, I was praying the other night and God told me to tell you all this. I promise you, you can count on your hands. I've been here 30 years because I don't dare want to go there. I may say the Lord impressed me or I felt led, but to get up and say I'm speaking and this is what God told me to tell you because usually guys that do that, the next thing is God told me to tell you to give me some money. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, buddy, I really got it. I'm really on board. Uh, so be careful. So the Bible says there's one master. He's not in Rome. He's in heaven. Let's talk about that. And, and then he describes him to us. We look at this. This is pretty neat the way he said this. Verse 6. One God, Father of all. Father of who? Creation. Who made us? 
God did. Remember what David said in Psalm 139? I am fearfully and wonderfully made. In the secret parts, God put me together. He formed, Listen to me. He said he literally formed my members. Hey, oh, we got some carologists in here. Uh, uh, did you know that your car, some of the special cars, that the numbers, they have numbers on the transmission, motors, and things like that, the older cars. And when you go to trade it, those numbers have to match. I didn't know that. Uh, Tommy Hunt and Chris Hunt, who go to church here, and Tommy was building his wife a Corvette. And I was in there one day, and he was showing me. He just had the frame, just the two things with the wheel. And he said, the numbers match. And I said, four wheels? One, two, three, four. I, I said, what do you mean? He said, no, 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 come here. Look on the frame. On the frame of a car was a number. He said, that number goes with the motor. That motor number goes with the transmission. It was fit and made and designed for this specific car. Even though it could go in another car, it was made serial number for this car. When God put you together, he didn't mismatch you. He put you together perfectly. David said in the talking about sexual intimacy with his, his mom and dad, he said, in the hinder parts of the earth, God formed my members. God put the right arm on the right boy, the right leg. Well, what about deformed kids? Hey, do you remember the New Testament when God healed the paraplegic? And they said, who's seeing him and his mother? He said, this was for the glory of God. I don't understand that, do y'all? I don't. But I'm going to tell you this much. God knows your serial number. Did you know your fingerprint's the only one in the world like yours? God put you together marvelously. That's why I, I, I'm so anti-abortion. and I'm sorry, but God puts people together for a purpose. And, and I think we can... By the way, church ought to do better in taking care of those. Mm -hmm. I'll say that. My sister challenged me one day. I said, well, if y'all going to do that, and I believe that, then y'all ought to take care of those little girls who are 17 don't have anywhere to go. Ouch. Right? Going to run your big mouth, put your money behind it, is what she told me. So, by the way, we're praying about that. Love to see a lady's home somewhere nearby. That may happen by the grace of God. If the Lord puts everything together, we're working on that behind the scenes. So, the Bible said He put us together. Now, look what He says here. The Bible says He's through all. <laughs> That's pretty good, isn't it? Then He says this And in you all. It's interesting. I want y'all to do, uh, we got just a few minutes. I want y'all to turn over to John. I hope I'm right here. Y'all turn, I'm going to show you something here. I haven't seen, I, I knew it, but I just hadn't, it just didn't go ding, 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 ding. Y'all with me on that? I'm going to show you something here. People say, yeah, but how about people who were born in Africa who never heard? You know the Bible speaks about that? Here it is. Found it the other night. I, I was doing a little quiet time thing on something. Now, I want you to listen to these verses carefully and what he's saying. John chapter 1 says, verse 6. Listen to this. Well, we've got, we got to read all of it. Look at verse 1, John 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Now, watch this. All things were what? Now, what did he say in Ephesians? He is in what? In all and in you all. He created everything that's created. That's what he's saying here. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. The world was his, and everything in it. In him was life, and the life was the what of men? The, the word light there is not what we would think of the word light bulb. It, it, it has a reference, but it's like being, it's like revelation, uh, revealing truth. Okay? And the light shined in the what? Darkness. But what happened to the darkness? Comprehended it not. But, but boy, look at this. This is mammoth. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to be, witness, be a witness of the light. And here it is. That was the true light, which lighteth every man. How many men? Every, every man that come into the world. When you're born, there's some of the light of God's revelation in you. I don't care if you're in Africa. I don't care if you're in America. I don't care if you're in Australia. The Bible says when you were born, you have a conscience. Even in Africa, they know what sin is. What is that? That's the conscious revelation of who God is. The light 
And here's what, read it right. That was the true light which lighteth every man that comes into the world. And every person who's born has some of the light of God's revelation in them. They may deny it. They may reject it. They may walk away from it. But everybody has some of the light of God's revelation in their life. And that's why in Romans he said, Oh man, you are without excuse. How do you not walk out on a night when the moon is full and the leaves are changing and it's about 69 degrees and can't you just say, there is a God. Where does that come from? The light that lighteth every man. So the Bible says not only is he overall, the Bible says he's in you all. He's there. We deny it. We reject it. One God, Father of all, who is above all and in you all. So he's above, he's in, he's created everything that there is. He's over all, he's in all, he's through all, he is all in all. He is everything that there is. Hey, when I grew up in South Mississippi, we had a little saying that if duct tape and bailing wire didn't fix it, you're too complicated. Anybody ever heard that? When you live out on the farm, if you got some bailing wire and you got duct tape, you can fix about, you can just about fix anything, amen? And it just. And power plier, that, amen. <laughs> Throw that in a little WD-40, sure helps. Uh, what are you saying? The, the God who's over all and the God who's in you all is the God is the only one who can fix you, you all. And the Bible said he is our master. He's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. So he describes here who the Lord is. He is the Lord God over all. Hey, when Moses got the summons to go to Pharaoh, y'all remember that story? Y'all go, it's a pretty interesting story. Uh, remember Pharaoh grew up in, I mean, Moses grew up in the courts of Pharaoh. Remember that? He was in the bulrushes. The, the daughter of Pharaoh found him, took him to the palace, raised her as his own when he got old enough. And, and by the way, who was his handmaiden? His mother. So every day she whispered in his ear, you're a Hebrew. You're Hebrew. You're not Egyptian. You're Hebrew. You serve the Lord God, Jehovah, every day. So he grew up. Then he got to be a man, and one day, the, you know, the Hebrews are out there, and they're fighting, and he goes kill an Egyptian and hit him in the sand, went into the desert, stayed there all those years. And then one day, God said, hey, Moses, I want you to go back and talk to Pharaoh. I'm going to give you some Ronnieology. And Moses says, God, do you know who he is? He says, no, but he's fixing to find out who I am. I won't say that again. You go back and read that story. Moses said, God, I can't back that. Do you know who he is? He said, yeah, I know who he is. But he's fixing to find out who I am. And I want you to go tell him. And so Moses said, all right, God, you know, I've been there. I've been in those courts. And if you mess up, they cut your head off. I, I, he witnessed that. That's what they did. Guys, they cut your heads off. All right? So we're winding down. So Moses it's pretty. And by the way, my, 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 I think he started stuttering right there. What did you say? <laughs> Wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Aaron, be real good. <clears throat> yeah. And so they have this conversation. And Moses said, God, when I get there, what do you want me to tell him? Remember that? Whose name am I coming in? And he said, you just tell him I am's coming. What do you say? It sounds like an old western, doesn't it? John Wayne. You just tell him I am coming, partner, when I get there. I mean, really, it's what it sounds like. He says, here's what you tell him. He may be Pharaoh, but he's fixing to meet the real God. Y'all go read that story. It's pretty, pretty detailed because Moses goes shaking in his boots. But he says, God, if you tell me to go, I'll go. Remember the story, don't you? Goes in there. Pharaoh. Who sent you? Now, what would, would you guys say? I'd come up with a clever <laughs> Billy Bob Bad. <laughs> you know? He's 22 foot tall. He's got 36 inch biceps. He's coming. He's coming. You better hide. You know? I, you know, I. What'd he say? Don't hit me. What'd he say? I am's on the way. And he's pretty upset. And when he gets here, things are going to change. And Pharaoh said, you don't know who you're talking to. He said, I may not, but I know who I'm talking about. Because I met him in a bush. And he's coming. 
and it's not going to be good. So guys, I'm going to tell you something. I want you to listen real careful. I know we got to go. Tomorrow when you go out in the world, and the world throws all, who do you think you are? I understand that. Arrogant, cocky. Who do you people think you are telling us that we, this book is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one, one. Who do y'all, do y'all think y'all know everything? All I know is I am. And he said, I am enough. So when we go through life, and Sunday we'll talk about this, when we go through life, in those difficult moments when we let ourselves down, we do. When we disappoint our loved ones, and we do. Um, so, somebody, the other day, we had a real big service. Some said, well, Brother Ronnie, you're going to get the big head. I said, oh, no, 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 I married you to Lynn. <laughs> what do you mean? I said, she'll take care of that before we get out of the parking lot. <laughs> Have no problem. Uh, got a defuser. Um, but, but we do need to remember this, who we serve. And Paul the Apostle said, along with Moses, there's one Lord and there's one God. And he is over all, he is in you all, and he's through all. And he's enough. So whatever you're going through tonight, thank God who we serve. Amen? He is faithful. All right? So hope you have a good rest of the week. Hey, two or three reminders, please, if you would like to be on the Harvest Festival to help us with a trunk. We need some pictures for our uh, Veterans Day, if you would do that. Sunday's going to be a fun day. If you like Southern Gospel music, you want to hear the Hogan's. Um, please, 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 if you would, Sunday, if you can, park in the back. Those of you who can, walk a little bit. Hey, do some exercise. Make you feel good. All right? You know, you're going to sit a long time, right? And in uh, here. So, hey, I had a guy that said, hey, you know, Pastor, we stand up during all those songs. I said, well, I had to stand up and preach. I got to stand up on the song and then preach. Y'all get to sit down doing all that. So maybe y'all just need to start standing up with me. and you're <laughs> Y'all didn't get a thing. I just say it anyhow. Does, so. so, hey, please help me do that, okay? Park in the back if you don't mind. Please remember those who've lost loved ones and all these others, okay? Good day in the house. Let's ask God to bless, all right? Um, any other prayer requests before we go? I'm, I'm just checking. Hey, Tracy Martin. Hey, listen, I just want to make sure we're good. Anybody got anything else? Y'all, I can, you know, you see their names right here. Something pops up on the screen, so I'm just watching all right, let's pray. Father, it's been a good night. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the encouragement to have that, God, we do have one mission. We have one message. And we have one master. And Lord, don't let us forget that. And Paul the apostle said, endeavor. Work hard at keeping that the main thing. So God, remind us when we get off kilter, and I do, when we get sideways, and I do, pull us back in. Get us back in line to serve you. Father, we just want to remember those who have loved ones who are going through hard time, who are suffering. For those who lost loved ones, <clears throat> may the grace of God that passes all understanding be the gift that, God, you give them. Lord, we love you. Pray the rest of this week <coughs> we'll honor and serve you. We pray for Saturday night that, God, uh, this campus will be filled with the servants helping others who may come on the campus for the very first time. <clears throat> that, God, we can encourage them even in the Harvest Festival. We bless you and praise you for all you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me, I lost my voice right at the end.